So first thing we're gonna do, like I said, I always like to start out with some stick work and some wrist strength before we get into the um, details for the draw. So we need our stick and a ball. Okay, so the inside. What? Where's your inside? If you're inside, you don't, and you don't have a ball, then you can just use your stick. It's okay. And you can do the motions, and then when you go outside, try and do it with the ball. But we can practice the motions too. Okay? All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our dodges, okay? So I know this isn't really draw related. However, it is because when we grab the ball out of the air in a draw circle, there's a lot of people around us. So we have to bring it in clo close to us and dodge around all of the people. All right, so we're gonna have it in our dominant hand. I'm a righty, so I have it in my right hand first. We're going to take a step out with our opposite foot. We're gonna slide this top hand all the way up, protect our stick. See how my stick is behind my back shoulder, 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 ball. Come back and then throw a fake pass, okay? So it's a step out, slide that hand up, protect your stick, bring it back, step through, fake pass. A couple of things I wanna mention. We really, 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 really need to focus on the details. There are so many small things that we can do that we don't typically do because we don't practice it that will have a very, very large impact on our play, all right? And that's one for this one, moving our hands around, okay? If I dodge with my hand down here, what's gonna happen? I know you girls are on mute, but I'm gonna get checked, right? See the difference when I dodge with my hands low? First one, I dodge with my hand high, how much more protected. So focus on sliding that hand up, but then we can't throw with our hand up here, right? We gotta slide it back down and throw a fake, all right? So let's go ahead, let's do 10. It should look like this when you get faster. One, two, three, got it. Go ahead. Corinne, make sure you're sliding that hand all the way up and then sliding it back down, okay? Good, Isabella, slide, slide it back down though when you go to pass. Slide it up, now slide it down, top hand all the way down, further down. Oh, nope, not the bottom hand. Now slide that top hand down your stick, so real quick. You're doing a great job having your hand all the way up for your dodge, but then when you come back, you're sliding this one up, we wanna slide this top hand down. It should be a little bit less than halfway down our stick, okay? Good. So what is your name in the middle iPad with the bounce back in the net? I'm Madeline. Madeline? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Just wanted to know it for the rest of the session so I didn't call you iPad. So once you do 10, go ahead and switch to your non-dominant hand. That's much better, Isabella. Good job. Olivia, slide that hand down now and do a fake throw, okay? After you come across. Good. Slide that hand, Corinne. Make sure we're sliding it up and down our stick. Madeline, try and go a little bit faster now. Looks like you got the hang of it. Good. Good, Corinne. Tyler and Riley, I can't see you. I just see the sky. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Good. Make sure you're sliding that hand all the way up, girls. Very, very important. I know it seems so simple, but I promise you these little details will pay off and they're super important. So we can't be laid back and casual with this. We need to make sure that we're sliding those hands up and down. Good. All right. So it looks like you all did 10 on both sides, right? Okay. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to try and tap the ground now below us. So now my hands are staying lower on my stick. They're not coming all the way up because if the higher my hands are, 
I can't get my stick to the ground. I would have to bend our knees and we're trying to avoid bending our legs for this. We want this all to be in our wrist and our arm, all right? So we're gonna step out again with that opposite foot. We're gonna twist this back leg. We're going to bring our stick across our body, tap the ground next to us, bring it back up, all right? So I'm here, tap. Notice that I'm not crisscrossing my arms, okay? I see that a lot. Girls go like this and they bend their knees and crisscross their arms. This butt end of my stick should be by my opposite hip. So you're bringing this bottom hand down towards your opposite hip, your stick around to the side, exactly in line with your side, and tapping the ground. So I'll show you facing this way so you can see. So I'm facing this way, stepping out, twisting my body, tapping the ground to the side, and coming back up. Okay, and you wanna do 10. When you get the hang of it, you can go super fast like me without the ball flying out. All right, so that's the goal to go that fast without the ball flying out. Now, I would rather you drop the ball by trying to get do it right, like this, and drop it, than just come across your body like this out here and not risk it, right? Because the only way we're gonna get better is if we make mistakes at first, but we're trying to do the right thing. We wanna be uncomfortable with things. That's the only thing that we'll get, com that's the only way that we will get comfortable with in the future, all right? <sighs> Good, Corinne. Try and keep it in two hands, Madeline. That's easier with one hand. Good. When you do 10 with your dominant hand, go, so Bella, we want to come across our body. So Bella, you're coming, you're like this and bringing it out here. We're going across our body like this. So instead of going out here, bring it in front of your body and then to the side. Okay. Yep, that, to that side. Yep, nope, to the other side. Like you're just doing, yep. Now drop it to the ground on that side. Yes, there you go. Try not to crisscross your arms though. Bring that bottom hand behind your butt. See how it's in front of you? Bring that bottom hand behind your butt. Behind it, see how it's in front? So right now, your bottom hand right here, this is my bottom hand is in front of your body. We want it to go behind like that. So you're, instead of coming in front like this, bring this bottom hand behind your butt and touch the ground. There you go. Yes, there you go, good job. Slide that top hand down a little bit. Good. Good, Tyler and Riley, I don't know which one's which. If you're Tyler, raise your hand. Ah, perfect, so it is. You're the first name on the screen, so it's in line. Good, Madeline. Try and tap that ground, Corinne. I know it's a lot harder with our non-dominant hand. Good. Good job, girls. Good job. All right, let's move on to the next one. So I did that one first because I think that one's harder than this one, but now we're gonna get into some wrist strength stuff, okay? So now we're going to put our stick in one hand. Let's go dominant hand. And our hand's gonna be all the way at the bottom. So we're going to bring our stick to the side of our body and then to the other side, all right? Notice that all I'm doing is moving my wrist, all right? So you should be lifting your stick by your wrist muscles, not your arm, all right? See how I'm not bending my knees and then moving my arm and using my arm to help me get the stick to the side? All I'm doing is I'm holding my stick straight out like this, and then I have it bent a little, my, my arm bent a little bit. I'm tapping the ground here and then to this side. All right, this should burn. My wrist already burned, just trying to show you that. So tap to the side, other side. Notice how all I'm doing is kind of hinging at my wrist, activating those wrist muscles and using nothing else except that. This should burn. If you need to slide that hand up a little bit, go ahead. 
Try to not use your arm as much, Madeline. Just lift that wrist. Good, Bella. Perfect, perfect form, Bella. Madeline, still, you're still, there you go, much better. Yes, there you go, Madeline. Good, Corinne. Corinne, do you have a ball in your stick? Oh, <laughs> use a ball so you can actually feel it. There you go. I was like, you're doing it so fast. There you go. Now you can feel the burn. Now try, try and touch the ground. All right, so once you do 10, switch it to your non-dom because everything we do in our dominant hand, we do in our non-dom. The sun's coming out here. Good job, girls. All right, when you're done, you can just stand in front. Let me know you're done. All right, let's go on to the next one. Good job, girls. So now we did side to side. Now we're going forward and back, all right? So I'm bringing the stick in front of my body and then in back. Again, I'm not really using my arm that much. This one, we have to use our arm a little bit more just because our wrist can't twist that way. So you have to bend your arm a little bit more to try and get the stick behind you. But again, I'm still not using my body and I'm lifting my stick up with these wrist muscles, okay? Forward and back 10 times and then switch hands. So even, and you girls can keep going while I'm talking, even when we don't take the draw, wrist strength is so, so, so important. No matter what position you are, no matter what type of player you are, you will be surprised how much you use those wrists um, in, in a game and in college when you get to play at the higher level. It really turns into from always being up and down to being up here and using our wrists to do things with our stick and our stick work. So this step is important to incorporate in your daily routines with lacrosse every single day. Do some wrist strength. So, so important. And it's very easy to do wrist strength workouts without weights or anything. Good, Tyler. Good, do our wrist burn? Do we do both hands? All right, let's move on to the next one. So the next one we're going to do, whoop, is we're gonna have our stick straight out and we're gonna turn it upside down like this. All right, so what this is mimicking is if we caught the ball on the, in, out of the air. So when we catch it out of the air, we can't wait for it to come down, right? But if we wait for it to come down, someone else is gonna get it and then we're just gonna get checked. We have to attack that ball. We need to grab it out of the air like this, all right? So that's what this is mimicking, all right? So hold it straight out, turn upside down, and back down. We're gonna do 10. Up and down is one. Again, using those wrist muscles the entire time. And we're gonna switch. Masks all in my pocket. Oh, I have three masks in my pocket. <laughs> this just hurts when I use my whole arm. What? When I move it up and down, it hurts when I use my whole arm. Yeah, you want to use those wrists. It should burn. That means you're doing it right. And the more you practice this, the less it'll burn. <laughs> oh, 
My dog is pawing at the door. She wants to come out. All right, last one, and then we'll get into the draw stuff. So now we're gonna make a wave, all right? We're gonna go up and down in a wave and across our body, all right? So we're incorporating what we just did and coming across our body again. This is super important, not only for wrist strength, but trying to mimic when we have to maneuver through traffic after grabbing it out of one air. I mean, out of the air with one hand. So you're gonna go forward and back five times. Over and back is one. And then we're gonna switch. So one is all the way over, all the way back, that's one. What, Maisie, you wanna come out? <laughs> Good. Good, this one burns a lot. I can tell it's burning, Olivia. <laughs> We gotta get stronger, but that's why this stuff is really good to practice every day. All right, we ready to get into some draw stuff and technique and quickness drills? Now that we got that over and done with? Okay, so before we start, I'm gonna go over some righty techniques first and then I'm gonna go over lefty. So even if you take the draw a certain way, I highly, highly encourage you to practice all different types of ways because sometimes when you go against an opponent, the normal way you take it isn't always going to be the best way depending on how your opponent's taking it. We always wanna be in control, so we always wanna start with what we're confident in and what our best technique is. But again, sometimes you never know and you might have to change your technique. So highly encourage practicing all of these and being open to learning all of them. I always took the draw with my right hand and then I started taking it with my left hand and now that is my best um, way of taking it. So let's get started with right hand first. We are going to just need ourselves and our stick for this one. So you can drop the ball. So Olivia, you just need your stick. All right. So first thing, we always want to have our top hand all the way up as far as we can. The lower we have it, the less control. So see how my hand's lower on my stick and my stick heads away from my body? When I move that hand up, it automatically comes closer to our body. We want our stick very close to our body, okay? We don't want it far away. Second thing, we wanna make sure we don't have our elbows out here, all right? We want our elbows close in. I have it at about a 90 degree angle. I know it's hard to see with my black sweatshirt. But I have it at about a 90 degree angle, tucked in very close to my body so I can control that stick. Second thing, our feet are facing straight forward. Our opposite foot, whatever one you want to put forward is fine. We'll be back in a nice athletic stance. All right? So what we want to do when we're taking the draw is we want to get out of the habit of just trying to push as hard as we can. If your goal is to just get it out and that's what you want to do, that's okay. But what we're really trying to focus on here is how can we control where that ball is going? How can we be quicker than our opponent to get it on the back of our stick first and pop it up straight to ourselves? That is the key to being a great draw specialist, okay? Being able to be quicker than your opponent and controlling where the ball is going. So in order to do so, like I said, instead of pushing super hard, we got to twist our stick to get the ball on the back of our stick. So the first movement we're going to do with our hands all the way up, stick parallel to the ground, nice athletic stance, we're going to take this bottom hand and twist it as fast as we can, all right? It's like I'm riding a motorcycle, right? And we're twisting it to get that engine going. So this bottom hand is just twisting and we're getting that ball right on the back of our stick. So a little bit closer here, twist, 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 okay? So we're getting the ball like this and then we can pop it up after. So I'm gonna blow the whistle. We're gonna be in our nice athletic stance. And when I blow it, you're just twisting here. That's the first movement that we're doing. I like to break this up. All right, ready? Good. 
Bella, put your hand the other way. We don't want your hand like this. Put it like that, okay? We should have an underneath grip. Good. Good, all right. Now we're gonna do the second motion. So the second motion after we do this is driving that bottom hand down and popping the ball up, all right? So again, we want to avoid just pushing out like that. We're being strategic with this where it's a twist and pop, all right? So what you're gonna do on this second whistle, so we're gonna start how we just ended now. So start with our stick like that, like we just got the ball in the back of our stick. Now we're gonna push this bottom hand down towards this same leg, all right? So if you have your left foot down, up, it's still gonna go towards the same leg, aka your right leg, since we're going right. All right, so start here, the whistle's gonna blow. You're gonna pop back and reset as fast as you can. Ready? Madeline, get a little bit lower and close to your stick so your hands are like down here. We want them to be up here in a nice athletic stance and we want our stick close to our body. All right, good. Now we're gonna add the jump because this actually is one of the hardest parts to it. So we could win the ball and get it to wherever we want, but if we can't grab it out of the air, then it defeats the whole purpose, right? So now we're gonna put it all together. Actually, we'll put it all together before we do the jump. Let's break it down a little bit more just because we're not live right now. Sometimes when I'm live, I like to put everything together at once, but let's break it down a little bit, okay? So now we're gonna put what we just learned together. So when we do this, we don't want it to be two separate motions like this, here and here. We wanna put them together now. So it's a twist and as we're twisting, we're popping, all right? See how I'm twisting and popping at the same time rather than twist pop, it's here and pop, all right? So let's put them together. Ready? Let's get in our nice athletic stance, stick close to our body, hand all the way up. Madeline, try and make it a little bit smoother, all right? So you're doing two separate motions. Try to make it all one motion. There you go. Good, now Tyler and Riley, we gotta go a little bit faster, okay? So you got the motions down, now let's, let's drive that hand down and go really fast. Good, Corinne. Good, Bella, put that hand underneath. We want an underneath grip. If you take the draw like this, I know that might feel more comfortable now, but I promise this will pay off in the end if you practice, practice, practice. I've never seen anyone at the collegiate level do this. I always see younger girls do it because we wanna push hard, but at the collegiate level, I have never seen someone do this. We wanna be underhand grip. So it's gonna feel uncomfortable now, but I promise when you practice, 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 it'll get better. All right, good job, girls. So now we're gonna add a jump. So you're gonna hear the whistle, we're gonna do it, and then we're gonna practice what we do after. So if you would like to do it and then grab it out of the air with your left hand, because it's already at the bottom of your stick, you can do that. However, I like to grab with my right hand. So that requires extra practice, because when I do this, my hand, right hand's at the top of my stick. So I have to practice going up and then sliding that stick up to my right hand and grabbing it. All right, so that's one of the harder parts. So we're going to blow the whistle. We're going up, slide that hand if we're going ready, take one step and jump in the air. So I'm gonna move back a little bit so you can see. Go ahead, sweep and grab it. Did you see how long I was off the ground and how I got a nice big jump? We wanna get our feet off the ground. We wanna grab that ball at the highest point. We're gonna feel a little bit unathletic after our first one. That's okay, and that's why we need to practice these things, all right? So it's sweep, and then reset, all right? You ready? Can 
Can you guys hear me? Corinne, can you hear me? Oh, you can hear me. Okay, ready? Get your feet off the ground, girls. Jump, Corinne, jump. Good, Madeline. Good. All right, so now we're going to get a ball on the back of our stick so we can actually practice grabbing the ball out of the air. All right? So what you're going to do is when the whistle blows, you're going to do the same mo that second motion. Well, obviously, since we don't have a stick to go against, we're just going to try and pop it straight up rather than totally exaggerate it. But ball's going to be on the back of our stick. I'm going to blow the whistle. You're going to pop it up, but we are using the same form, all right? Don't, don't let your form get worse just because we have a ball on the back of our stick, okay? So we're in our nice athletic stance. My hand is all the way at the top. My elbow is tucked in close to my body. We're driving this bottom hand and then using this top hand to pop it up, all right? So it should be like that, all right? So I'm gonna blow the whistle. You're gonna pop, you're gonna grab it. I'm going to say forward or back. If I say forward, we tap the ground in front of us. If I say back, we tap it behind us, all right? So just a little example right here. I'm gonna say tweet, tweet, forward. All right, one more, show the back. Tweet, back, tap the back, all right? I want you girls to challenge yourself, which means I want you to try and pop that ball high up in the air and grab it at its highest point. If we can't jump and get it, or if we can't practice grabbing it out of the air, then everything we're working on now won't really matter because we won't be able to grab that ball, okay? So challenge yourselves. We're here to get better. Ready? Where did my whistle go? All right, let's get set. Olivia, you can just do the motions. Forward. One hand, so we want to tap the ground with one hand, all right? There you go. And then I also want us to be in a nice athletic stance, okay? So we want to act like we're taking the draw. We don't just want to throw the ball up. We want it to be on the back of our stick, and we're not here going like that, right? That's not going to help us. We're here, nice athletic stance. We're driving this bottom hand and driving this bottom hand out and punching that top hand up at the same time. So I'm here, tweet and popping it up. All right, let's do it again. Forward. Good, reset. Back. Good, reset. Forward. Reset. Back. Last one. Back. Good, all right, good job, girls. So um, now we're gonna go into directing the ball, okay? So we got the basic step down. Now what do we do if we wanna get the ball to a certain area? So it's similar to what we do when we pass and throw, right? We always follow through to where we want the ball to go. If we're shooting and we want it to go low, then we'll bring our follow through very low. If we want to go high, then we're still falling through all the way, but we're not finishing as far down to the ground, all right? So same with this. If we want the ball to go forward, we're doing the same thing with twisting and driving that bottom hand down, but now this is where our top hand comes into play, all right? So same motion, twist, drive bottom hand down, but now I'm punching that top hand where I want the ball to go, 
So if I wanted to go forward, it's a twist, punch forward. If I want to go to the side, it's a twist, drive down, punch to the side. If I want to go back, it's still a twist, drive down, pop over, over this back shoulder. So the back of my stick should be going wherever I want the ball to go, all right? Got it? So we're gonna do 10 forward right now, all right? So I'm gonna blow the whistle quick. You're just gonna punch forward like this. Again, nothing changes with my bottom hand. It's still twisting. All I'm doing is directing this top hand now so the back of my stick is facing where I want it to go. Let's do 10 quick forward. Reset, sorry. Good, all right, now we're gonna do 10 to the side. So now my ball, the back of my stick is pointing this way. So we're twisting and driving this bottom hand down to our bottom knee per usual, and then punching our stick out to the side that way. All right, we ready? Good, Olivia. Good, Maddie, or Madeline. <laughs> Making up nicknames here. Good, all right, now we're going behind us, so I need you girls to pay attention to this one because it can get a little tricky. So now, when we go behind, again, same thing, twist, drive down, but now I'm still popping the back of my stick to where I want the ball to go. So it's not a twist, and then bringing it back here, it's a twist, and then punching over my shoulder. So see how this back of my stick is going to the, where the ball is going? So if I had the ball, it's a twist, and then pop behind, all right? And Maisie's gonna go get that ball. Ready? Corinne, make sure you're still driving that bottom hand down. You're just going like that. We want to still go here, down, and then pop. Okay, here we go. There you go. Much better. Good. All right, let's grab a ball. Okay, so similar to what we did before, but now I'm not going to blow the whistle. All I'm going to say is forward, side, or back. If I say forward, we're popping the ball in front of us like this, all right? So if I say forward, forward, in front, and grab, and then reset. If I say side, we're popping it to the side. Grab, reset. If I say back, we're popping it over the shoulder, open the grab, grabbing it, and reset. Again, I did not do it super high because I wanted to keep it in frame so you girls could see what I was doing. But challenge yourselves, try and pop it up high so we can practice grabbing that ball out of the air. All right? Are we ready? Any questions? We're good? Here we go. I was gonna say, Tyler, you might need to back up so you don't hit the computer or whatever you're using. All right, here we go. Forward. Good, reset. It's okay if you drop it. Back. Reset. Side. So Tyler and Riley, we wanna pop it to the side, okay? Both of yours kinda went straight up. We wanna get it. You went straight up here when I say side. We want to get it away from our girl who's over here. So our girl's on this side of us. We want to get it over here and then grab it with her on her, our back, okay? All right. Coming back. Back. 
So when we go back, girls, let's oh, we don't want to go back and then reach back like this. We want to open up with it. So if I'm going back, my momentum's taking me this way. I'm turning in towards my stick, turning around. Again, boxing her out and grabbing it this way, okay? So we don't want to go like this and then reach back. It's go behind us, go with our stick, grab, okay? Reset. Forward. Good. Back. That's better. You can even turn around a little more, Madeline. Side. There you go. Even more to the side, Tyler and Riley. To the opposite side of your body. Last one. Forward. Good. All right, let's bring it back. Now we're gonna go over lefty real quick, okay? So same concept, so I don't wanna go into like too much detail because we're doing the same things, but just changing up where our feet are facing and what hand it's in. So in our left hand, now we have it in our left hand, our stick is, my the inside of my stick now is facing you guys. So with righty, the inside was facing us, now with lefty, facing you guys, all right? So make sure we set up like that. I'm getting really hot. Okay, so inside of my stick is facing you guys. Now we're twisting our stick, but we have to twist the other way, right? So we can get the ball in the back of our stick. If we twist that way, then the ball's not, it's gonna drop into our other player's stick or our other opponent, all right? So now we're twisting this bottom hand forward getting that stick to face up and then driving it up. So same concept. So I don't want to spend too much time on this, but again, twist. And then this bottom hand is punching down. This top hand is punching up the direct where we want it to go. So first thing we're going to do is the first one. We're going to do quick whistles. I'm going to go tweet and you're going to twist it like this to get the ball in the back of your stick, working on that quickness to get the ball in the back of your stick. Look at my bottom hand how fast it's going. It's very loose in my top hand. I'm using this bottom hand to twist the stick as fast as I can. That will make you a better draw taker, I promise. Quickness is super important. All right, you ready? Um, Corinne, twist your stick around. Inside should face me. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. There you go. And now you're going to, instead of roll up this way, we're going down. So see how my wrist is going down like this. There you go. All right, ready? Good Madeline, good Tyler and Riley, good Bella. Olivia, put it in your left hand. There you go, good. There you go. All right, let's add step two. So now we're going twisting down and then punching this bottom hand towards our left leg, all right? So down, punch, down, punch. Now I just did it in two steps, but what are we doing? Putting it together in one. Because if we go like this and then go like that, we're gonna lose. We gotta get really quick at doing it simultaneously. So as I'm twisting, I'm popping, twist, pop, twist, pop. All right, are you ready? Good, by the way, this is how I take the draw. I love this way because a lot of people do push against your stick, but for this, I want the girls to push in my stick so I can use their pressure and then dig it out and pop it and then grab it with my dominant hand, all right? So this is my favorite way. So now we're just gonna go over the directions real quick so we can just hop into those girls um, instead of break it up. So now same concept, we want the ball or we want our back of our stick to end up where we want the ball to go. So if I want it to go to the side, I'm doing the same twist and drive down, but now I'm punching this top hand 
towards the side. If I want to go in front, twist, drive down, but then punch forward. If I want to go behind, twist, drive down, pop over this back shoulder, all right? In a game, if we want it to go backwards, I typically move my feet this way. But again, we're still doing the same thing. We're still twisting and then punching towards our left leg. We're just directing the ball to where we want to go, all right? But we're going to stay forward for this because it's actually harder. So then you'll get the hang of the twisting, which is the most important part. And then in the game, if you want to go back, you can twist your feet this way. But for the interest of time, we're just going to stay forward. Okay? So without a ball, we're going to do 10 forward. Twist, drive down, pop forward. Like this. All right, here we go. Good. Good work, girls. All right, let's go to the side. Twist, drive down, punch to the side. Like that. All right, here we go. Good, all right, now behind us. Twist, pop behind. Twist, pop behind. Twist, pop behind. All right, ready? All in one motion. Good. Behind your other shoulder, Madeline, your top, your left shoulder, okay? There you go. Pop it over your back shoulder, Tyler or Riley. So you're going in front of your face, go behind that left shoulder. There you go. All right, good work. Let's get the ball now. So we're gonna go back to that same first drill and then we'll do the second drill after. So now I'm blowing the whistle. You're popping it up, you're grabbing it. If I say forward, Tap to the ground forward. I say back, grab it, bring it behind you. Okay? We want to get really smooth with this. So, in the beginning, this is super hard. So, we're probably going to grab it and then do it really slow in front. But when we get better at it, we want to be able to grab it. I say forward, tap the ground forward, and bring it back up. Then reset. I say backward, tap it back, bring it back up without the ball flying off. All right? You ready? Get set. Forward. So we're going on the whistle and then I'm gonna say either forward or back. Reset. Back. Pop it up high, let's grab it with one hand. Forward. Back. That's okay, Madeline. I'd rather you throw it really high up and get that first motion down. I'd rather you drop it and challenge yourself because that's the only way we're going to get better. Okay? Back. Good. Last one. Forward. Good. All right. So now we're going to do that direction one. So now I'm either going to say forward, side, or back. We're, we're going to have a stick on our left hand, girls, okay? So left hand. I say forward, we're punching it forward, whoop, too much, grabbing it, and then resetting. If I say side, punching to the side, grabbing, reset. If I stay back, going back, twisting with it, and catching, all right? We want to twist our body with this one especially, all right? If I stay back, throw it behind you, twist your body towards it, and grab it, all right? Here we go. 
Ready? Let's get in a nice athletic stance, okay? Let's get, we should not be, our body shouldn't be straight up. We will never win a draw like that. Let's get in a nice athletic, good. Forward. Good, reset. Side. Good, Madeline, good job. Reset. Back. So Madeline, remember, we wanna turn our body with it. We don't wanna reach back behind our neck like this. Turn our body with our momentum. Couple more. Forward. Reset. Last one. Back. There you go, Madeline. That's better. All right, girls, that was the last one, and I usually like to leave at least 10 minutes at the end for a Q&A. However, I do want to do one more drill for you girls, just so you know a drill that you can do on your own. Um, I think that we didn't really touch on it that much, but something that we need to practice, and I practice every single day, we all need to practice this, is getting that ball out of the air, because that's the hardest part. Um, it's hard when we're alone but especially when there's a ton of sticks trying to get that ball, all right? So what I want to do right now is just do 10 snags. I call them snags. So put the ball in your hand. Like, if you're a righty and you want to grab it with your right hand, put it in your left hand, okay? So your right hand's at the bottom. You're going to just throw it up, jump, grab it. Let me move my screen up so you can see. We're working on timing and also getting that ball out of the air, all right? So it's in my left hand because I'm a righty. I'm going to grab with my right hand. Throw it up, jump, grab it, and bring it in tight as fast as you can. Oh, you don't need to put it Up, grab, bring it in. Up, grab, bring it in. Do 10 with our dominant hand. Do them with me right now. All right? It's really hard time it up. Make sure you're leaving the ground because if we keep our feet on the ground, we'll never win it. Throw it up. Grab. That's something you girls should practice before um, your quick whistle drills and the drills that we just did as a warm up. Good, once you get 10, you can come to your screen. Come here, Maze. Come here. All right, girls, so I always like to um, end my sessions. We have about five minutes left with a Q&A. So it can be anything related. It can be related to the draw. It can be related to my professional career, collegiate, recruiting process, um, quarantine, um, any type of question that you might have for me, feel free to ask. You can unmute yourself, or if you don't feel comfortable, doing it, please feel free to chat. Sounds like Olivia has a question. Yeah. Okay, so what positions are do coaches usually look for the most? I... So I might be biased because I am a <laughs> midfielder, but I think that midfield, it's really, really hard to find great two-way players. So you might be a midfielder, but you might excel more on the offensive end than the defensive end or vice versa. You might be a midfielder, but you might excel more on the defensive end than the offensive end. And so I think the more versatile you can be and dynamic, the better. And that's why I think midfield is a great position because – um, you could really stand out if you're doing your job both on the defensive end and the offensive end. It is really, really, really hard to find players like that. And um, the more 
coaches see that in you, the more they're going to want you because defense is really hard to teach. And so if they can see someone who has that athleticism and um, great awareness on defense and play great team defense too, then I think that that's definitely something that they'll look out for. So make sure you're trying everything. Like I said, the more versatile you are and dynamic, the better, because there are a lot of great just attackers. But there aren't that many people who are great at everything. So practice defense as much as offense. I know that we want to score goals and we want to be on the stat sheet, but that's not what they look for. So, and your work ethic and attitude also plays into that. Great question, Olivia. Um, question from coach Ed, do you use a pocket slash head that is designed for the draw? So I like to use a stick that I can play both with. So, um, I don't like to switch sticks. I did it in college because I had to use a certain brand and I could not use that brand for the draw at all. But now that I um, like a stick that I can do both, I like to have the same stick because it can be really, really, really hard to switch and it just gets tiring and it's not um, worth it. So sorry, I keep turning around me. My dog's eating the plants and they're poisonous. But anyway, um, so my stick, I like to make sure that it has a higher pocket so the ball sits up here. See how it has that nice pocket where the ball is just sitting in there. And then I also like to have a sturdy head. So if you can find those two things with also a stick that you feel comfortable playing with, then that's um, my advice for that. Before you play, do you get nervous? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely get nervous. However, um, those nerves go away as soon as the whistle blows. And I know that it's a lot easier said than done to kind of just play without the nerves. but I think the more confident you get with yourself and your stick work, the less nervous you'll become. And so that just comes with practice. And um, the more you practice, the more confident you'll be, and that'll help you with your nerves. Any other questions? Olivia, are you typing a question? <laughs> you can unmute yourself. Is your dog's name Maisie? Oh, sorry, I didn't see that question in there. Yes, her name is Maisie. <laughs> Maisie! She's like in the woods now. She likes eating sticks. Do you like to play other sports sometime? Great question, Bella. Um, that is one of my like biggest pieces of advice is to make sure you're playing other things. I think that we want to focus on a single sport because we want to make sure that we're practicing it all the time. And even if that's a sport we want to play in college, we want to focus on that. However, um, I think it's great to get involved in other activities. It doesn't even have to be other sports, but other things because I find that if you're doing the same sport over and over again, you might get burnt out. And when you're burnt out, it's not a great feeling and you won't enjoy it anymore. And so um, playing other sports is something I highly recommend. College coaches look for multi-sport athletes. They love that. Um, and you can get better at a single sport from another sport, right? There's a lot of concepts that you can take from basketball, for instance, that will help you with your defense and picks and rolls and team defense. And then soccer, um, um, is a very like endurance type sport. And so that will help you with that. So I definitely suggest um, playing other sports. Any other questions? All right. Well, Thank you so much, girls, for joining me this afternoon. I had a lot of fun. And make sure you keep practicing, practicing, practicing. I know that these times are very hard. And we want to um, get out there with our, our, our teammates and friends. And hopefully soon we'll be able to. But in the meantime, take advantage of the time you have now to work on small things that you didn't necessarily work on at practice. Um, and then when you get back on the field with your friends, you will be so shocked but excited on how much better you are at little things like your non-dominant hand or your dodging. So um, hang in there. Again, take some time to work on these simple things like wrist strength and dodging drills because I promise it will have a very large impact on your overall play.
So thanks again and stay safe out there and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.